Hey guys and welcome to this 3ds Max to UDK export tutorial. Now we're going to be using FBX uh, which is a massive sort of plus moved on from back in the day when we used to use the ASC files and uh, target textures individually so this can allow us to export the 3D models together with the texture. Now what we're going to do first is you know, I'm going to show you these two models that I've got. I've got a Pepsi can which is a very simple model as well as the vending machine which is quite a simple model too. too. And uh, you can see that the pivots are kind of offset. And this is something that can occur if you've moved your model within Edit Poly. So if you select all the polygons and moved it or if you've gone into Vertex and, and done the same thing within Edit Poly or Edit Mesh then you've basically offset your model from the pivot point and that is a big no-no you do not want to be doing that because it's going to cause you a lot of issues when you're trying to align stuff and you know your pivots off somewhere in the distance so the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be aligning these pivots correctly for the model and then we're going to be aligning the models into the 3d space and ensuring they're the correct scale so that's the kind of workflow that we're going to be starting with so what we first need to do is we need to, in our side panel just here, we're going to go onto the Hierarchy tab and then we're going to go on to Effect Pivot Only. So once you're on this, it means that we can affect the pivot individually and we can kind of move that pivot without actually moving the object. Now we don't want to be doing it by hand like this because it, you know, we want to make sure it's perfect, we want to make sure it's exactly where we want it to go. So we're going to go first of all to Center to Object just to bring it back into the middle of the object. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be simply going onto the Snap toggle option so we're going to select that and then we're going to be right clicking on that and you want to ensure that you've got grid points and vertex points or vertex selected now what vertex allows us to do it means that we can move this pivot based on the position of a vertex point which is great because uh, on this particular model I want the pivot to be kind of on this back corner of the vending machine because if I push this up against the wall and then I want to rotate it I want this to be the point where it rotates from similar to a door if you had a door and you wanted to rotate the door then it's going to be set on hinges which is going to be somewhere around about on this back edge so imagine it you know being a door then you kind of understand how this would be a benefit so we're going to then go ahead and just close this once we select vertex and grid points and then we're going to be using our orthographic views if you find that easier. I tend to think that it's a little bit easier using orthographic views. We're just going to drag this down and you'll see how it's snapping to the vertex point. So I can actually go to any vertex point on the model. I'm going to go to this one in the bottom left hand corner. And then in here I can simply just sort of push that back so it snaps to that back corner just there. So what that means now is that if I go onto my rotate tool, so that's either hitting this uh, icon just here or E on the keyboard as a shortcut. I'm going to turn snap off for a moment. I can then rotate just based on that corner. Now this is obviously a massive bonus. If you've got a door and you want to open it, yeah, you kind of see how that would be a benefit. So I'm just going to undo that rotation and now I'm going to be moving this into the 3D, uh, into the middle of the 3D space which is obviously essential if you're going to be exporting to UDK. Because if you don't do that then what's going to happen is you're going to have your object's pivot point actually off somewhere here and not where you want it to be. So what you're going to do now is go onto the move tool. So select and move, either W on the keyboard or this icon just up here. And then you're going to right click down here, you'll see three boxes which has parameters for this object's position in the 3D space. And so you're going to be right clicking on each one of the arrows and what's that's, what that's going to do, it's going to reset each one of those values back to zero. So now you can see that pivot point is placed at zero, zero, zero along all the axes in our 3D space, meaning that when I export this, the pivot's going to be exactly where, where I want it to go. Now it seems like quite a long process, but once you get sort of used to it, um, you know, you can do it in a number of seconds actually, but I've just been explaining it, so it seems a bit longer. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, work out the scaling for this object. Now very important because if I export this now I might find that it's actually as small as half of the character so we don't want the vending machine to be you know half as tall as the character um, so we want to make sure that we actually set this up correctly so before we kind of go ahead and scale this we need to make sure that our units are set up correctly so what you want is you want to go on to customize unit setup go on to generic units here so we don't want any of the other options go on to generic units and in the system unit setup you don't need to change anything if you've got anything different then that's when you might have to change it back but essentially you want this as your option so you just want to okay that and then what we're going to do is we're going to go into our create tab and we're going to create a simple box so I'm just going to create a very kind of 
basic box at the minute and I'm going to be now going into height and what the height of the UDK character, the default character is 96 units tall and we can see straight away how much taller that is compared to our vending machine and if I remember correctly it is 32 units by 32 units uh, sort of width um, and depth of the character. So that is the height of our character. So what that means now is that I can use that as a template to scale this up. Now don't forget the pivot point is correctly where I want it to be. So when I scale this, the pivot's going to stay in the same place. So I want this vending machine to be sort of maybe slightly taller than the character and really not too much more. So that kind of gives me a good um, sort of guide of how big I want the vending machine to be. So that's perfect. Done. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to move this sort of character guide out the way. Uh, there's a number of different things or very important sort of um, things that I need to cover. The first one is going into the modify tab of this character, uh, sorry, of this uh, vending machine. You might have lots of stuff on this stack. Now, if you have a number of different modifiers on this modify stack, then it can increase the file size of your export. So, what you want to do is always before you're exporting, is go to the very top modifier in this stack. You want to right click onto it go on to collapse to and then hit yes on this window and that's going to collapse it all into one editable poly if that's what you're using now that's obviously better because it's going to collapse all that down still holds all the information of the unwrap but it's just collapsed down and it's going to save you some file space um, which can be quite important if you've got tons and tons of files that you're exporting uh, the next thing is to do with textures so with this particular um, vending machine you want to make sure that you're using either a PSD file or a Targa file they're probably the top two that I would recommend PSD is obviously because you can maintain those layers and then update your textures within UDK um, or Targa files as well but I always recommend you keep those PSD files anyway in case you want to make tweaks to the texture and you've got many layers on the texture you don't want to then have to restart again or sort of have to tweak and and cut out parts in the Targa file so always keep that original PSD file where you've been working on numerous layers which can be a massive benefit if you ever need to make a change. Also um, there is an issue when it comes to exporting um, any sort of advanced map so if you've gone into using some sort of mental ray or architectural style material where you've got glass or any sort of paint or gloss or metal then that is not going to export so you want to make sure that you're using just a standard uh, diffuse color a map or if you're using specular level you can use that or if you've got a normal map as well you can put that into the bump channel and that will sort of transfer across so make sure it's just a normal material without any sort of extra architectural sort of um, shaders being used at all so now that that's all in place it's the right size we've collapsed the stack and we've made sure that the textures are the right formats we're gonna now go into um, export so we need to select the object first we're gonna go into the file export and then export selected now it's important that we hit export selected because you might have a highly populated scene with lots of objects and you don't want to export them all in one go uh, because you might want to apply physics to individual objects so I want to uh, export this vending machine alone so I can then later on add some physics to it and uh, so my character can actually interact with it so I'm gonna to go to export selected I'm gonna overwrite this file that I've already got now it's important when you're exporting that you don't have spaces in the file names just because later on if you try to import into UDK it can spit out an error saying it cannot import because of invalid characters so you want to make sure that you select uh, a file name without spaces or you can use an underscore to kind of give you that space with the, uh, between words so I'm going to go ahead and overwrite that one now within this FBX export window we're going to be going into geometry first of all and what you need to select is smoothing group so if you set some smoothing groups up you want to ensure that you take this otherwise you're going to get faceted uh, surface on your actual model which is not good if you've got let's say a ball for instance you don't want to have that ball having harsh edges per poly because it's not going to look very good unless that's the look you're going for next you might want to deselect turbo smooth unless you've used it so if you've put a turbo smooth modifier onto your stack then you can hit that but I generally turn that off because I tend not to use turbo smooth you want to tick triang triangulate because by default UDK will try to triangulate but by selecting it here it does give you a better uh, end result so you want to make sure you do that you've got a number of different headings here animation I've deselected because I'm not 
taking any of these things, so extra. I'm not going into animation, no cameras, no lights, but on embed media, you need to ensure this is selected. If you want to take the texture along with the actual uh, model file, then you need to make sure that this embed media is selected. The very last thing then, you want to go into units. Now remember we set up the units within uh, 3ds Max. You want to make sure here that the scale factor is set to 1. So if that's anything different, it's probably because something else is selected within here. So make sure that it's on automatic and the scale factor is showing as 1. Once that's all done, uh, you want to go down to FBX file format and ensure that you're on the very latest FBX version. So currently it's 2014, so you want to select that one and press OK. That is now exported. The textures, the model, everything has gone with it. It's in the correct pivot point. So we're going to now go into UDK and now we're going to be importing it into our blank scene. So you might already might have a scene where you've got things in there. Uh, Actually, if you did, then you probably wouldn't be following this tutorial, so that's a bit of a redundant comment that I just made, but anyway, um, by default, you'll have the content browser. If you have closed it and you don't know where to find it, it is this icon just here, or you can use the um, the shortcut, which is Control, Shift, and F, if you want to go right down that laborious route of using that, um, that shortcut. But anyway, the content browser is the icon there, and now we're just going to go on to Import. We're going to find that... Um, exported FBX file which is this vending machine.fbx and in this window here it does use the file name so this is where I'm saying if you've got a space let's say something like that and you try to press OK and save it will give you an error to say import failed da -da 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 -da. name contains an invalid character and in brackets it will show you it's a little space so that's if you ever get that error that is why so I'm gonna put an underscore back on there the package again you can name the package whatever you want so if I call this J's because uh, that's what I'm calling I'm J, uh, J's map. That is what the package is going to be called. And whenever you import anything for this map, I always recommend that you use that very same package name. So there should be no deviation from that package name. Otherwise, you're going to end up having multiple packages and it becomes harder to manage. So we're then going to go into grouping. Grouping can be done where you know you could specifically set a group for a particular type of model. So you could have one for crates, you could have one for trees, you could have one for vehicles, it could be anything, or one for textures. So that's where grouping comes into play. I'm going to leave it blank just for now because I'm not too fussed as it's just a sort of test map. Next, we're going to be scrolling down the options here. Now, important that we, I'm just going to restore some of these because I've just been meddling around a little bit we're going to be going down and the only things that you need to have selected for a single model export is pretty much materials and textures now if your single model has a number of different meshes that you've not attached within edit poly then you're going to need to select combine meshes so you might want to tick that just in case you're not sure about that you can just tick that option as well and then it'll all come together instead of as individual parts which can be laborious then to sort of align within UDK. Press OK. It's going to give you a little error saying an out of date FBX has been detected because the latest version um, is, I think, 2015, I guess, or 2015. I don't know, maybe, because the 3DS Max 2015 is now available. I still have 2014. So, yeah, that explains that. So, I'm going to press OK on that if you get the FBX error. And then you'll see. It's brought in the textures, we've got J's map, the new package, and there's a material, a texture, and the static mesh. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the static mesh into this viewport just here, and I can just move around in here and have a look, and that is what I want it to look like, that looks pretty good. I'm also going to apply a very Actually, I'm going to leave collision for another video, so let's just uh, leave it where it is right now. So we've got that mesh in there, and we can simply go and test this. Now, if you go to play in viewport or go to play uh, this level, then what's going to happen is you're going to realize that it's actually a little bit smaller than what it should be. You see how it's uh, smaller? Now, that is because you're not actually in a game mode at the moment. You're kind of just in this sort of view everything um, without actually being in a UDK game mode. So that's why it looks bigger. So what you need to do to kind of fix that and to see the world as you would if you were playing the game as a map in the UDK engine, you need to go up to view, you're going to go down to world properties, and then within game types, you want to expand game type. Within the two, within the two drop downs, you want to select 
UT Deathmatch. So that's probably the one that I'll select. There are different ones on there, but that's the easiest one to have. And then you can play this map. And you'll be able to see that that is now the correct size. So that is roughly the same height as the character. As I get closer, you can see kind of how big that is. It's a bit taller than the character as I set it. Now, as I said, there is no collision on this video on this uh, vending machine. So make sure you follow the next video after this where I'm going to be adding some collisions so I can shoot this object and tip it over, knock it over and all that kind of stuff. So some cool stuff to come. So hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. Apologies if it took so long but I really had to cover some of the bases just to ensure that you're doing things correctly um, and just to make your sort of workflow a little bit easier. Um, just before I go actually just to prove that that pivot point and all the effort we put into there you know, making the pivot in the correct place and putting it into the middle of a 3D space, it's now allowed this pivot to be exactly where, where we wanted it to be. So if we wanted to rotate this, you can see that it rotates on that pivot. So once again, having a door for instance, that's going to allow you to animate that door on the pivot point and not off pivot, which can be very, very awkward and it's actually impossible to work with. So hopefully once again you've enjoyed this. If you have then please do drop a like, please do hit that um, subscribe button as well because I've got tons more content coming and hopefully you guys you appreciate the sort of depth that I'm going into these tutorials so I could be really quick with it but I try my best to sort of explain things the best that I can for your benefit um, so you guys can truly understand the process and um, really understand things as close to industry standard as possible you know don't just want to be rushing over things so without me rambling on any further guys I will catch you all in the next video where I'll be covering adding physics to this bending machine.